that's exactly what I was talking about, though. Yeah. Like the, that, that, w- the way that you guys put it, mm. it was it was way back in the day on one of the Q and A Saturdays. Like mm. it was a while back, right? And you were there because you're not you weren't always there for the, for those, but you were there this time. Oh right, and, when, um, I, when I would visit him, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And you were there for like you know for this one in particular. Um, so yes, I, I had already had that understanding because because I looked into Sean's stuff just because he's closer to me than you are in Rhode Island, right, and I was in sure, California. Sure. Um, and, and so he I read the whole thing about... 10 minutes away from me. The good yeah, from you and Chatsworth. Oh, wow, um, Chatsworth, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I looked into his stuff, and, and I saw when you do the, like, contact us thing, it, like, tells you, hey, listen, if you don't know how we work, let's be 100% clear. Yeah. Do you understand this? Check this box, yes. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. you don't check it, you can't, like, submit. So so I respect that, but but what I really found interesting, because, again, this podcast is geared toward newer trainers who... Mm-hmm. who uh, and not only need to learn how to train dogs, obviously, but like you've been saying, need to know how to run a business, which means Correct. sometimes vetting clients, which means also marketing appropriately to what you do. And that's why I was saying this isn't a knock on Sean because I love his programs. I know he's effective. You know, I've called him uh, a couple times, like before we ever did the podcast and everything, just for advice. Like I've done that that consultation call sure, with him, a f- sure, you know, sure. a few times. Um, and uh, uh, what I'm getting at is. You guys made it okay, and you're still the only – some of the only trainers I've ever heard say this to, like, just be 100% up front with the content, yeah. with e-callers, including corrections, because that was your way to pre-vet clients so that the ones that don't want you don't even bother you wasting time coming to the door. Correct. And the way I've also found it is, like, listen, you might as well get the no now right. than, than the argument later. And right. I, it re- I think one of the things that's happening in this industry, and I know why it's happening – because I understand people. People ask me, like, what dog trainers do you follow? And I'm like, I study human psychology books. Like, uh-huh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to learn more about the human and what uh-huh. motivates them and what drives them. And so, and because I want to, you know, that's also another whole, like, I do a lot of. That's what you're per- trying to influence. I also do a lot of personal growth stuff, too. So, um, yeah. Right. So I think that, I think it's important that, that. People understand. I mean, I think a lot of trainers now, and I understand why they're doing it, is they're like they're softening up the fact that they correct a dog. They're like trying to, I don't want to say lie, but they're holding back a little bit. And the way I've often thought about this is if you're doing it at your training center, why are you not talking about it? Right, right, right. And it's like, hey, Jeff. What do you do if an aggressive dog lunges at your face? I'm like, um, it goes up in the air and it gets hit at 100 and it's not going to want to do that again. And right. it's totally with no emotion. And mm-hmm. it's it's a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And good. We all sat with that. You all done, dog? Great. Yeah. You ready to work? Let's work. But yep. this is a dog that has zero problems just randomly attacking people. And it's like, no, you can't do that. And until you have that conversation with a dog, which again is, you know, under 10 seconds, but that's the most powerful 10 seconds possibly of the dog's life. Right. You have not even begun to go down the road of rehab. And we often right, talk right. about rehab of a dog being very similar to, you know, drugs and alcohol. And it's like, like you've got to change your lifestyle. You might have to get rid of your friends. You might have to go to mm-hmm. different places. You might have to, and then you gradually have to also, stay out of certain areas that you used to that you used to frequent and your owners have to change and like there's so much human change that is involved and the big thing is how can you motivate the owners to want to change like i never right. give you know i never say you have to you know the only time i give have to's are people with biting dogs and kids mm-hmm. and i'm like yeah. the only way i'll work with you is if you do this because i've seen too many I've seen too many face bites on children in my life more than I right, care yeah. to see. And, right. and having kids, it, it, it it's like, home. it's like it yeah. hits very home and I have zero problems. If you go after a kid, you're going to wish you never did. And I don't have right. a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Like, like how could you sleep at night? I'm like, I sleep. Yeah. Extreme. Well, actually I don't sleep well because I've got sleep issues. Cause it's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing <laughs> yeah, you to do told with me two in the morning. You it's wake true. up. I woke <laughs> up at 1158 last night. You know, you don't oh, even want to know. So which gives me plenty of time to like, I listen to tons of blogs and stuff and I write. Uh-huh. Um, so, but the thing is, is that I think like, why would you not disclose to an owner all your protocols? Because mm-hmm. 
let's say, and I can't show them on social because we'll get deplatformed, but but we are we are coming up with this solid canine training university, which we own the platform. Mm -hmm. We control the platform. We're not, we're not controlled by the big tech companies and we are going to be doing a basic obedience, but we are coming out with videos, literally no, nothing held back. Uh Um, And they will get probably more and more like people will take them and make all their fake you know, stuff, which is fine if that's what right, they right. want to do. I mean, it's but that's fine. on them. That's not on that, you. That's on them. Right. It's an indication of who they are as a human being, not on me. Um, right. But the amount of people that are helped because of the bonking video, because of the resource guarding, because of, I mean, how to stop jumping on humans. I am very forceful. It is a very firm yeah. correct. And I demonstrate it in all my seminars. And I, and yeah. I, I tell the owners, I prepare them. I ask permission they know their dog is going to possibly scream, but they've got a dog that won't stop jumping. And I'm like, dog right. stops jumping right at a seminar. Um, so I think that there's a lack of transparency, a lack of honesty, a lack of ethics. There is too much gossip. There is mm-hmm. um, this industry. Too much posturing. There's too there's, much like moral right. posturing. And, and this is the thing. It's like owners see it. Yeah. They see it and they're turned off by it. Yeah. And right. I can't tell you how many times someone will say, Yeah, I watched so and so's video, but I really didn't like their personality or how they bashed other trainers. Right. And right I'm right. like, if people were smart, they would stop all that stuff and focus on how to be more helpful than hurtful. Mm-hmm. And, but again, that's on them. That's on them, right. not on me. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, but. This is like business 101. Could you imagine what was that airline that dragged that doctor off the plane? Oh, um, I forget, but I, I remember the video. You remember that? He was on the floor yeah. and they dragged him off. Could you imagine Richard Branson, who owns Virgin, <laughs> getting on the air and going, Fly Virgin, we won't drag you off the plane. You know what I mean? It's like, right, it's right, like, right, right. It's right. like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> cheap shot. It's anybody, cheap shot. anybody that's a professional, they don't, talk, they don't, they don't talk right. shit. They don't talk yeah. shit. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. That's and, true. But lately, I will admit that I have been doing some public shaming um, because it works. Because it works. Well, but but you know yeah. what, though? But I, I've seen it, too. Uh, in fact, I, I meant to bring that up. And I know we're running low on time, so I'll, I'll keep this very short. I just have a couple quick yeah, questions for you. For, time, yeah. yeah, I just have a couple quick questions for you for newer trainers. Um, but but I have seen your like back and forth that you've been posting with people. Mm-hmm. I find that different because to me, there's a there's a world of a difference between defense and offense. Correct. And, you know, so but so to get to my questions, then uh, for newer trainers, I noticed that you have this like built in defense mechanism for your friends and followers of like you don't name names, even if it's something good, because you just don't want to like associate because of the controversy. Correct. So here's my question to you. Uh, if a newer trainer was stuck between I agree with Jeff Gelman, <clears throat> I should be 100 percent up front with what I do and how I do it. Um, but also Jeff doesn't doesn't like name names, you know, is there something to maybe I should soften the blow? Like if, the, if it's a buyer's market, if the Jeff Gelmans of the world already exist, should there be the, the softer spoken and like, you know, because these people have to kind of decide what their online presence is going to be? Um, mm-hmm. I, well, first of all, I don't like it when people defend me. I don't like it at okay. all. I don't, <laughs> I don't like it at all. Like I can hold my ground. Um, right. I mean, I get hundreds of pieces of hate a day. My children have been threatened with their lives and sexual safety. Um, wow. we've, had, we've had the FBI involved. I mean, it's gotten some pretty some pretty serious stuff with armed guards, and you know, I, I carry twenty four seven, and like I don't need to get right. into that. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book on it, so it's like wow. oh, cool. about the intensity okay. of this whole last two years. So, right. but but I think the bigger issue is the bigger issue is I don't need people to defend me. I think that more trainers should speak out on what they do and how they mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. And if you want to turn off your, like, I can't tell you how many people cry over a one star rating. I'm like mm-hmm. 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 one star, try waking up to 600 one star ratings. Mm-hmm. Try right. being on the front page of Scotland's largest newspaper, which I was like the mm-hmm. Scotland's right. like, I mean, I'm actually turning that graphic into a t-shirt. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I felt bad for, in fact, I apologized on the podcast to Meghan Markle because mm. 
I, I talked to somebody in the, the, the paper and they're like, yeah, we had a big article about Meghan Markle, but you bumped her off the front page. And she's oh, got this, man. she has this little square up, up in the top and it's like, sorry. And I mean, I was on the BBC, <laughs> I was in the, B, the BBC, like attacked me. And it's like, mm. so, I mean, what I think is like at the beginning for any young dog trainer, they should probably stay away from the harsher stuff because they haven't right. built, they haven't built up social media equity yet. And what I mean by right, that right, is, right. They're not being dishonest, but what I mean by that is how many people have you helped with right. training what to do? How many videos mm-hmm. have you made? How many, how much social media, media equity do you have? And then you can start being like, listen, this is how you train everything. But I know a lot of you are struggling with barking, separation, anxiety, leech reactivity. Right. These are the protocols we use. And I right. think that people have to stop giving a shit and stop being little crybabies. Put their shit out there. Fuck all the haters. Turn off your, tur- frankly, turn off your reviews. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody knows reviews are, a lot of reviews are fake. I mean, Yelp is a joke. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Yelp wants to come after me after this. Yeah. You guys know. Oh, you, you guys know. I get, I get reviews about employees that I don't even have. There's, Dude, well, <laughs> Yelp. It's like, and also, it's like, there's all these interviews with like ex-employees. I'm like, I don't share my side of the story. But mm-hmm. we're hiring right now. Like, yeah. we are hiring in every category. Mm-hmm. Why would I fire somebody when I'm hiring? Dude. Right. Right. And Why Yelp would, is so... Right. Why would I fire... Just think about that. Why would I fire right. somebody mm-hmm. when I'm hiring? It's not because they were making too much money. It's because of other reasons which I don't talk about. And I won't talk about. I won't talk about somebody's personal business, why they were terminated, because... I find that extremely unprofessional. And right. if somebody wants to drag my name through the mud and make up stories, that's again, that's an indication of them. And it has got like someone else's opinion of me has got nothing to do with me. And that's right, right. a very, very famous quote. And it's said by, you know, Les Brown and Eric Thomas might say it. And a couple of other motivational speakers might say it. And it's like, People need to understand that. And then also, if you're going to become a professional dog trainer, I mean, none of us should have thick skin. Like, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have to live in a world where we have to have thick skin because there shouldn't be so much hate. But right. but on the other side, it's like, don't let the small shit bother you. And it's all small shit because right. your average seminar that I go to Either people have seen these videos and laughed or they've never heard of them and they don't give a shit. Why? Because all they want is help. When it comes down Mm -hmm. to it, owners want help. That's Mm -hmm. all that matters. That's all that matters. 100%. I have a question that I ask every special guest that we have on this podcast. So – so I'll, who was it? It was either with Tyler Mudo or Michael Ellis. We mm. we talked about the art of dog training, correct? Right? And it's a, yeah. and it's an art, right? And they do Ultimately. and they and they do spend a lot of time on, which kudos to them, by the way. Mm-hmm. That seems to be their market. A lot of it. I could be wrong, but it's like mm-hmm. like targeting trainers towards like the art of dog training, where I am more mm-hmm. going towards. The consumer, like right. mm-hmm. how to right. get your dog like livable in your home, but, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I'll let you finish, and I apologize. Yeah, yeah, and so, also, and so because of, because it's the dog trainers podcast, it's I think it's right. really important for people to see the different colors in the color palette. It's important Correct. for people to respect, agree the 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 tools, in it, right? And, 100%. and uh, you know, on either side of the aisle, it's like we have to understand this is an art form, and Correct. you're going to have your kung fu, karate, jujitsu. You're going to have all these different disciplines. And, and one thing that, that we ask everybody, we say, okay, you as an artist, Jeff Gelman, right? And because you do influence dog trainers and you do influence the public and your clients. What do you think is the biggest tool in your artist toolbox that allows you to be the most effective artist in dog training? Well, I think the number, there's probably a bunch of things. Sure. Or I should say a few things. The, the, one of the biggest reasons why people hate me is because I'm so transparent, in your face, blunt, and mm-hmm. I probably say stuff that pisses people off. Yeah. Mm. But that's the exact same reason why people like me. People love you. Yeah. And I'm 87% skewed female. 
Mm. So for anybody out there that's thinking it's like, who's my client base? It's 87% female. That includes my social media following, my, mm. my seminar attendees, and my literally boots on the ground in my mm. training center thing. Yeah. So, so the same thing that pisses people off draws people to me. And well, again, I think it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, like, let me say this on, you know, on, on your behalf of why I really respect you and, and people who, who, uh, you know, and I think we're similar, all of us in the sense that like, I don't have to agree with you to respect. Of course you, not. Right? Like, I mean, you and I agree on a lot, but I'm just saying like, like in general, the idea is whether we agree or not, th- there's a difference there. And, and one thing I think I, I just, what you're trying to say, it sounds like to me, um, is like a very, it's a very athletic thing to want to, to want to value as a virtue. Like when I say this, this is a direct quote from Kobe Bryant. So, so don't take the word out of context. He was praising Steph Curry, you know, the, the guy from Golden State. And, uh, and he was saying the thing about Steph Curry that makes him such a, such a killer, like in the sense that he's just ready all the time, right. is he's never up, he's never down, he's just cold. Cold as in, as in I'm just ice cold, I keep my eyes on the prize, like, you know. And, and that, I think, is what I've seen very well, especially in the face of all this adversity from like you and Sean, you know, and stuff like that is, is I'm just Jeff. I'm just, I'm just, there's a certain like relentlessness to it. And I know why that bothers people because you see it again in sports. Like, you know, there's the whole Mayweather thing. Like, I don't care if you like him, don't like him. He just wins over and over and and over. I think it's not my job to get you to like me. Right. 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 That's that's right. That's not my job. That's why people hate it. Yes. It's, it's interesting. And it's also, frankly, I don't care because, because <clears throat> I'm like, I'm a, I'm a father first. Mm-hmm. Dog training is, it's a business for me. But even when I was in the adult industry, I did seminars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did sex seminars, like literally Brown University hired me. And, and it's like, so... I helped people back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just mm-hmm. think about that. I helped people back then and now I'm doing yeah. seminars and dog training. I'm helping people now. So if somebody said to me, like, what do you like the most? It's like helping people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Helping yeah. people. It's yeah, like, yeah. and it's like, well, you can twist it any way you want, but, but, but the gist of it is I'm helping people and that gives yeah. me oxygen. A friend of ours yesterday on our Instagram live that we did for about an hour, he, mm. he said, he goes, if you think, if you, if dog training is your passion or mm. is dog training your calling? Right? Mm. And, and he made the distinction because mm. like a passion is what you like to do. Mm. Like I like to, like, I like to sing. Like I'm, a, I'm actually a pretty good singer. Mm-hmm. Right. And I thought at some point I wanted to be a performer, but then I realized that's not my calling. Like, right. like I really like singing. I like performing, but it's not my calling. And versus your calling is, is your mission in life. Right? right, and so sometimes your mission in life is to help people. Sometimes Correct. your mission in life is to to help the you know the underdog. Whatever you're calling, what what would you say your so passion a, versus calling is? Because great, I'm seeing there's a parallel. That's a great question. Then I'm gonna have to exit out because I've got an online console. Yep, so sure, 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 sure. I so I love love helping people, yeah. and right now, dog training is my Trojan horse. Mm. that gets me there. So yeah. I am able to help as many people as I can because of my skill set with their dogs. The dogs get me in the door, but when it comes down to it, I'm helping people. Yeah. That's what it I boils down to. So my my mission in life is to help as many people as I can in whatever spectrum it is. I wouldn't say I am passionate about dog training, which might go against what a lot of people think. Uh Um, Like I'm about to go to a, um, I've got to fly to Vegas because I don't think my RV will be done. So I've got Mm -hmm. to fly to Vegas. And then from Vegas, I'm going to Canton, Ohio for a seminar. I'll be Uh gone for 12 days. Uh I'm not, I'm as as much as this might like surprise people. I'm not going to miss my dogs. Uh It's like, my dogs are at work. My staff is taking care of them. They're healthy. They're, they'll be happy. They'll get interaction. It's like, I'm not one of these 24 hour dog persons that like, like right. dogs are everything to me. Dogs, 
dogs. Yes, I enjoy my dogs. I love to I love to run my dogs in the woods. I love to swim mm-hmm. my dogs. I love my pack coming running back, charging at me after like they got the ball or, or came out of the yeah. water. I yeah. love it. I love it. It's great satisfaction. It brings a smile to my face. But mm-hmm. this concept of like without dogs, I'm nothing. I'm like, please. I got so many mm. other things I'm working on right now. Right. It's like mm. dogs are just like, I mean, they're, they're, they're family pets. And it's just mm-hmm. like, I've got a skill set to help people have a better life. And I'm just using dogs for that. But right now, like Joelle and I are putting together these personal growth retreats. Guess what? No dogs. Hmm. Mm-hmm. No dogs. I, I think I can, I can really relate to, to, to that to that avenue. Mm. Like I, I love dogs have always been a part of my life, and, yep. but they're the avenue in which I'm able to help people provide people with work. Um, you know, and, 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 and mind you, I am a little bit of a dog psychology nerd too. So there's, which there's an fine. intellectual, there's an intellectual yep. part Absolutely. to it that I really is stimulated by. Absolutely. And, but, but I can honestly say like in 15 years from now, I don't want to be handling dogs. No, no. Or no, even I'll, 10 years from now. I'll, you know I'll, what I mean? I'll, 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 my, 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 I'm going way less than that and I'm not going to announce it until 2022, but <laughs> there's a lot of stuff <laughs> is happening, which will benefit. Yeah. Which will benefit more owners. Well, then should we actually. cut this part out of the podcast? No, you can leave it in. <laughs> okay, no, you benefit. posted this too. It's, it's going it's to benefit more owners, more owners. That. But the daily that. slinging of dogs, mm-hmm. it's like I think my time is more valuable doing other things. So instead of helping one to two dogs at a time, right. I can be helping you know one thousand, ten thousand, one hundred thousand dogs yep. at a time. So. Yeah, right. So do you want to wind this down? Cause I got to, get- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're, so, we're so done. Thank you so much. Mm. We absolutely have so much more to talk about. You know, when you're free, we'd love to have yeah, you back have me you know, or maybe an Instagram I'll see, I'll, live or I'll something. See you in, I'll see you. Phoenix is advertised by the way, Jeff Gelman seminars.com buy your ticket now. So <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah, mine is, that. mine is literally already purchased. Uh, I'm bringing a, a foster dog and I'm bringing my, my uh, girlfriend. When is it? We're so uh, uh, December. It's like fifth and sixth or fourth and fifth. Something like that. It's, I was it's just looking after, at it like, let's see. It's after San Diego. The, the idea was I wanted to go. I'll go to San Diego because I'm in LA. Because I drive, so. I drive to, I drive to the West Coast and then I drive right. back. So mm-hmm. Phoenix is on the way, on the way back. So I think you're right. It is in December. Um, yeah. But hopefully my RV will be done by then. But all I can do is this, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed my time. I'm respecting madly what you're doing. I love Thank the way so I, I love the way your show is set up, and I love the openness that you have, and it really just shows. Your inquisitive, your your inquisitive mind, and and unfortunately, Thanks. unfortunately, like that alone, like fuck this dog shit, right? Just just listen to the way you deliver your and ask your questions. Like that's how life is supposed to be. Right. That's I appreciate how it's that. To be. That's totally Thank how it's supposed so to much. be. Yeah, you you had no agenda other than learning stuff. Yeah, so, 100%. And, I appreciate and we want to bring that to, to our audience. Yeah. So thank you so much for yeah. being a part of it. All right, man. We Thanks, really appreciate Jeff. it. We'll see you, buddy. You guys have, have a great fantastic climb. day. All right. Take you care. too. All right, guys. That concludes our interview with Mr. Jeff Gelman. If you guys are interested in following him, go ahead and check him out at Solid Canine Training. And I believe that's also his social media handle as well. Check him out on YouTube as well. Um, and we really, really appreciate you guys uh, staying tuned. Uh, those of you guys who want to support the dog trainers podcast. We are now officially sponsored by the Canis foundation. Uh, the Canis is Latin for dog. And those of you guys who, uh, who, who have the internet, go to canisfoundation.org. And if you guys want to contribute anything to the dog trainers podcast, uh, you guys are now able to make donations to help us create content, uh, and produce content for you guys. So we really, really are excited that, that, that's, that's able to happen. Um, and we appreciate you guys listening and we appreciate all your support, all your messages, all your reviews. Again, thank you guys again. And we look forward to seeing you guys on episode five. Again, my name is Brent and that guy is Mariano Alvarez and we will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers for dog trainers or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. We really hope that you enjoyed this episode and can't wait to be back with you guys. Be sure to follow us at Dog Trainers Podcast on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget to punch the hell out of that subscribe button and leave us a review. Remember, guys, this is your podcast. You're the best listeners in the world, and we'll see you next time.